John Furrier with Silicon Angle. We're here at the EMC no Mega Launch uh, Analyst Briefing with uh, Michael Capellas with VCE. Just gave the briefing to the analysts. Uh, VCE's changed. You guys are listening to customers. Tell us what's changed. You mentioned service providers. There's a new channel. There, you guys are enabling that. So give us a quick update on VCE and what's the big change you were just talking about? Uh, well, there's a couple things we've done. Uh, first place is uh, one of the big changes is, is that the customer acceptance has just been absolutely astounding. But We've also taken a look at our model, and one of the things we feel very strongly about is we're here to actually enable our partners and our, and our customers, and so when we first started this kind of the journey, we said, well, we will have a service component, and we'll be able to do build order transfer to help some of our customers. In talking to our partners, it became clear that, that there was at least some view that we were competing. So to be very clear, uh, we are here to provide core technology, next generation conversion infrastructure, and not to offer service capacity but to make that an enablement uh, for both our service provider partners and our other uh, service partners so that we are not competing with them that we're enabling and we are out of the service business. And since then the results have been pretty staggering. Yeah, you know, uh, particularly given the, the long and really just, you know, in incredible relationship that we've had uh, uh, with the channel, it was really important to us to send a quite specific message that, that you know, we're, we were he here to help them extend their business and, uh, Quite frankly, I think it created more confusion than it was probably worse. So uh, again, that is absolutely the message, and uh, and we've had uh, you know really a lot of success. We've we've now up to 120 plus partners, and so uh, that's gone fairly well. And great pipeline. You know the channel business. You've been there, done that. You've lived many lives in the tech business. You've seen the movies over and over again. In particular, this one, the channel conflict resolved. VCE's booming. You guys are doing great. That's right. And so the Acadia name we have now so we've retired it. VCE is the delivery of the solutions. We will provide to our partners you know, the ability to have solution centers and help them train their people and offer expert opinion, but we will not be taking uh, service modules directly. You would mentioned also in, in, your, in your life, you've seen a lot of inflection points, and, and you talk about 18-month kind of big movements, um, Blade, you mentioned, and other, other revolutions. Cloud, people are talking about, is kind of hypeish, and there are some outrageous, val outrageous valuations out there, some of these internet companies. Is it real? And just to share with the folks here on camera what you said in there about the 18-month surge you're going to see. Yeah, there's a lot of question about is the cloud, is it real, what it really is. And so I've always said if I go back through time is when you see major inflection points in technology, it's normally about an 18-month uh, adoption cycle. We saw that with Blades. And then in 18 months, that was a $10 billion business. We saw it with IP networks. And one of the reasons why I sort of look and say the cloud is the cloud really started with the adoption of IP networks, or as I described, you didn't have to know or care uh, where the underlying infrastructure of the network was. You wrote to a network level, the customer was able to roll that out, uh, new applications developed, they didn't have to know or care where the physical infrastructure is. Uh, that moved out to the adoption of x86 architecture for you know superb price performance points. Networks started to merge, and so then you thought you didn't have to know or care where the network was, you didn't know or care whether it was voice, data, or video, and what this next generation is taking that delivery model to the next place in on the compute, which includes obviously storage and network performance. You don't have to know or care where the physical infrastructure is, which saves customers a lot of time and really uh, aids application deployment. We're here with Michael Capellas, legend in the tech community. He's been around the block, knows the business, really, really talking about converged infrastructure, massive growth, running VCE, which is a joint venture between Cisco, VMware, EMC, and now Intel. Congratulations on all your success. Thanks so much. Thank you. Great to be here. Business, they get 
Visibility yeah, we're required to discipline on the schedule. Before, or would it take months to ask the IT organization you know, to, to develop? And kind of we repeat that process. So this notion of a big data solution factory is really something that we're kind of instilling in our clients. So they work with us. We take them from prioritization to the technology to the analytics and solutions and sit on top. And then it's a continual process to really leverage the asset over time. As, as we all know and we've heard in all the case studies today in the session, kind of originally what these clusters originally stand up to do, very often the, the organization will find new things to do. So once that word gets up, I have all this compute on the cloud, I can do all the new data that we've been optimized before, it starts to really grow on the vision story. And, and that's kind of where we really bring marriage to the IT organization. These kids force that. So I have a question about the, the value of EMC. I wonder if you could just make, maybe make an observation you can comment. Sure. I'm not going to have my numbers exactly right, but roughly speaking, on January 1st, I looked at the value of EMC compared to a year ago, and, we, and I assumed that 80% valuation We're running, uh, of, we're running of, my question of, to Joe. VMware, so ownership of VMware. And the core value of EMC actually dropped in, in a year. We had a great value. Value. tons of free cash flow, uh, great revenues. So do you feel like... EMC is undervalued as a result of that, or is it fairly valued because of the VMware ownership, and, and you get the uplift from that. I wonder if you could just talk about that dynamic. Does it matter? I mean, I, I know you think it's undervalued, but just if you could talk a little bit about the, the dynamic, and, and does that matter? And is there anything you can do about that? There's shareholders that own VMware. I'm talking about the VMC on the equation. There's shareholders that own VMware. Went on and for, for the year time, last year, they got 110% return on their investment. The shareholders that own EMC, and they got about a 33% memory surgery rate return on their investment. Right? So 110% up, 33% up. These are both far in excess. So customers are liking both sides. Right? Now, to your point, if you took VMware's value, so I don't know it is anymore, but it's uh, approaching, it's, just, it's called 40 billion, but it's close. So if you took 80% or 81% of 40 billion, is that reflected in EMC's 50 billion? And the answer would probably be no. Right? Uh, uh, why is that? And it's a lot of things, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of ways, ARBs, when you give two ways to play something, you, you, there's arbitrage. And then, of course, EMC, EMC at a company of close to $17 billion in revenue, uh, can you afford to give that? You know, you, you kind of got a bit of a sanity coming in, too, right, uh, in terms of what what am I going to give VMC, this big company, forget about VMware a second, what am I going to give just that consolidated P&L, what PE am I going to give that relative to its peers? So if you look at the big peers, you know, you look at an Oracle, you look at a Microsoft, you look at an Intel, you look at... Cisco, et cetera, et cetera, they are giving us a higher P in all of those companies. I make a statement that of the really big companies in IT, we're the smallest of the big, right? So uh, we didn't announce this quarter, but last quarter, you know, we, you know, we had 50 billion in market cap, and last quarter we had uh, 10 and a half billion in cash. That's a lot. In any other industry, it'd be a giant, but you know, in, in our industry, there's there's companies that are way bigger and way more cash. So again, um, it's not all the big ones have more cash, but if you look at it in kind of the macro. So, you know, we're kind of the smallest of the big, which is okay. You know, we have a lot to run. But if you look at all the, the ones that are above us, right, we have a higher P than all of them. So I think there's two ways to look at it, right? One way is you look at a consolidator, and that's what we're telling the world. We're telling the world, hey, VMware's part of the family. Yes, we shared it with employees and we shared it with public, but we're we're holding our stake and it's and, and it's a consolid it's a it's a it's a consolidated company, it's part of our financials. So they believe us and they're looking at EMC as a whole and they're saying what what do I want to give EMC as a whole? What PE do I want to give that company? What's their growth? What's their prospects? And and you know and I'm not going to argue with the market. So it's as cheap as it. We just got to continue to perform and things tend to take care of themselves. So that's, I think, what's happening with EMC. They're looking at it as a whole because they're now believing us. There's a lot of fodder for a while. Of, hey, you're going to split them off. You're going to do this. You know, I kept saying, no, we're not. No, we're not. This, this strategy together makes a lot of sense. Right? 
I mean, if you look at the cloud, you know, do you need what VMware's doing? Absolutely. Do you need information? Information storage, information management, information protection, information security, information intelligence? Yes, you do. Those are pieces. So you, we got all of that in one company. You know, we partner very closely with Cisco and get some of the pieces that we don't have, most namely um, networking, and, and uh, we use their UCS servers, right? So again, I like what we have. But I do think what's happening is customer, they're not customers, investors are looking at us and they're believing us. They're saying, okay, let's look at this as a consolidated entity. And then VMware, um, you know, just got an opportunity to go to a really unique place in life and they're treating that more as, as a, uh, you know, it's, it's got great momentum, it's got a great place in the cloud and it's, uh, believes that it'll grow into its P over time, so they're willing to give that more of an advanced PE, which, you know, multiples of EMCs, and um, you know, that's kind of the way they're playing it. And a lot of investors play both sides. And so, you, so it is what it is. Across the globe in Karapisan village, Djibouti, an eco-dome is rising out of the desert. Local villagers work side by side with coalition members from 84 nations, as well as soldiers, sailors, airmen, and marines from the U.S. Africa Command's Combined Joint Task Force, Horn of Africa. The goal is twofold, to create a permanent resource that will be used as a school or health clinic while at the same time teaching villagers building techniques they can use to expand their community. The U.S. military has a long history of building infrastructure in Africa. Just ask retired General John Custer. On his watch, the U.S. Central Command built roads, schools, and wells, in addition to assisting the United Nations and many nonprofit organizations in humanitarian relief and nation-building efforts across the region.